Hi everyone, my name is Aisha and I'm from Mealsoft's Customer Success Strategy and Architecture team. In this video, we'll be looking at applying the taxonomy approach to API categorization. This is very important as it helps drive a first class API developer experience by making APIs easily discoverable. So let's get started. Now, you're probably wondering, what is an API developer experience? Well, it's the practice of understanding how developers work and most importantly, optimizing the experience they have through the whole life cycle of an API. The two major ingredients for developer experience are discoverability and documentation. As we'll focus on discoverability today, let's explore this further. Taxonomy is the fancy Greek word that describes the law of ordering. In short, it is organizing, categorizing, grouping, and most importantly, understanding why it is being done. The exchange portal already holds a large amount of APIs, and adding more to that number makes it challenging to discover and consume APIs. However, this is where categorization comes into play. Categories enable exchange administrators to group the assets, APIs, and non-APIs. A category consists of a name, a list of applicable values, for example, a category called department could have possible values, marketing, HR, and accounting. Only exchange administrators can configure these predefined values. A particular category can be created and assigned to a specific exchange asset type. Now, let's look at why categories are important. Adding categories is the first step towards that great developer experience but it is also important to not just create them ad hoc to avoid inconsistencies. These categories you create become the skeleton of your exchange ecosystem, cluing in both its users and exchange search engine to its structure and content. Taking time to define the categories with a more holistic approach can lead to several benefits, which include, it boosts your search experience optimization, reduces the time and effort of users to find the right assets, decreases chances of users not discovering APIs and assets, and provides an overall superior search and navigation experience to users. As the number of APIs grow, taxonomy and search become very critical for internal and external API audiences. The bigger the number of APIs, the more important taxonomy becomes. As you can see on the slide, for primarily external audience who use less than 20 APIs, taxonomy and search are only somewhat important as compared to those who use 50 APIs where taxonomy and search are highly critical. Now, you're probably wondering, how do we actually identify categories? Well, API taxonomy can be derived from business, technical and operation context that can potentially be used for classifying and searching the APIs in the API marketplace or exchange. API taxonomy plays an important role in API design and cataloging process as it can be very useful in providing context to the APIs. It can be set up as exchange categories or for some of the attributes which do not have fixed set of values can be associated to the APIs as tags. Taxonomy can be useful to organize, group, tag and classify the APIs in exchange and API marketplace to establish relevant context useful for searching the API. Examples of categories include business unit, subdomain, asset type, API instant and API design style. In order to make categorization easier, we use the top-down approach. The category top-down approach is split into four parts. At the very top, we have business, then IT, then technical, then at the very bottom, pattern systems. The business layer is split into two. We have the consumer type and their business. The second layer, IT, is split into environment and bounded context. The third layer, technical, is split into API layer and data. And the last layer, pattern systems, is split into logical patterns and application systems. In order for you to further understand categorization, let's pretend I am an exchange admin who wants to categorize my APIs to make them easily discoverable. Now, you'll probably ask, how would I do that? Well, this is the approach that I'm taking. I will use this flow diagram to help me. First, I will use a top-down approach to identify the categories and create categories in Exchange. These category names can then be used to group the APIs into categories by API developers and owners. This leads to an enhanced search experience for the Exchange consumers to search and find relevant APIs quickly. So, let's get started. 
I have identified my first category name as consumer using the top-down approach. Next, I will identify the context in which my case will be business, which is the first layer in the top-down approach. After that, I will identify the category values. These I've chosen as customers, internal, external and partner as shown on the slide. The last thing I need to do now is to find out what asset types these will be applicable to. And in my case, these will be REST APIs, SOAP APIs and HTTP APIs. I've applied the same approach to bounded context as a category name. Then I will use this slide to identify my category values. I will do the same thing to data types where I will use this slide to identify my category values for data types and do the same for backend source systems. Now that I've applied the same approach to each level in the top down approach, it's time I showed you my categorization worksheet to help you understand better. So here's my categorization worksheet with all the examples that I have discussed. After adding these to any point exchange, which you can find out how to do in the enhanced API discoverability with exchange video, you can now see how easy it is to be able to categorize APIs. And I'll do a quick demo to show you how easy it is to find and search for the APIs that have been categorized. So now that I've replicated my worksheet in exchange by applying the categories, as you can see here, here are the asset types, the values and names of the categories. I'm going to go to my API, so I'm going to click on all assets. Then I'm going to go on any category and I'm going to filter my APIs. I'm going to click on internal and then apply. And here we have it. Here's the API I've been looking for. Then I'm going to add more categories and values to this. So I'm going to add customers and partner. And I'm also going to add application systems as another category. And I'm going to add Salesforce. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to filter through. So I'm going to click on Salesforce and apply that first. And you see it comes up. Then I'm going to go on another value. So I'm going to click on customers. I'm going to apply and you see it comes up again. Then I'm going to click on internal and it comes up again. So now I'm going to go to another API and I'm going to apply different categories. So I'm going to click on MUA flights API and I'm going to add application systems and I'm going to add the values Salesforce and SAP. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to filter through. So I'm going to go on any category and I'm going to go on Salesforce. And you see two APIs come up. We're only looking for one. So I'm going to click on SAP and here we have it. Here's the API we've been looking for. And that wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching this video where you learned about API categorization. And hopefully by now you can categorize the APIs. Feel free to leave a comment, check out our other videos and click on the links in the description. See you soon. Bye.